being inspirational and motivating are essential if you want to be an effective leader. A leader that cannot have an impact or a leader that doesn't have any impact within an organization is normally one that isn't inspirational and isn't motivating. So how can you become someone that can inspire and motivate? So the question for today is, how can you become a more inspiring and motivating leader? Inside organizations, leaders who do not have these competencies normally find it very difficult in a lot of areas. Number one, high absenteeism and turnover. The truth is, guys, the staff just won't stay. Number two, if they decide to stay, they might not even work at the level that you want. Number three, staff become resistant to change. That is very dangerous for any progressive organization. Number four, patients notice things quickly. So if the quality is down, they will notice. And number five, over time, there's going to be a decreased performance in terms of your financials. As an organization, an organization that's trying to make money, you're going to start to see a reduction in the amount of money that you're bringing in because patients are running away. So guys, how can you address all of these issues? Hello and welcome to another episode of Leading Health. Thank you guys so much for connecting, for engaging and for exploring this episode with me. Much appreciated. Please subscribe, press the subscription. It's amazing to have you guys here with me today. What we are going to be talking about are the three leadership competencies that you need to become a better inspirational leader within your organization. Number one, create a shared vision for your organization. Leaders who create and demonstrate inspirational motivation have a clear and compelling vision for their organization. To do this, you should, number one, involve all the stakeholders in creating that vision, all the stakeholders within your organization. Number two, you need to clearly identify what the mission is and actually communicate it to everyone in the organization especially the employees, so that they know that everyone's on the same page and you guys know what you're doing. Number three, what you want to do is to create a sense of urgency. So you need to emphasize the importance of actually achieving the vision, because if you don't, people are going to become reluctant. Number four, you need to set achievable milestones along the journey. So you need to recognize these marginal gains. That's something that I think is very, very important because it keeps your employees galvanized and it keeps them moving forward, which is what you want. So an example of this can be a leader who wants to improve the quality of care within their organization. What you want to do is to share that vision with everyone in your organization and to get them to buy into the vision that you have. So guys, the second way that you can improve is to inspire employees to work towards your vision. So to do this, what you have to do is to communicate the vision clearly and passionately to all of the stakeholders. So communication is very key. Then you need to connect the vision to the work for employees so that they can see their contribution to the vision. If they can't see the contribution, they're going to think, what is the point? After you've done that, what you also want to do is to make sure that the vision is deemed to be achievable. If employees don't think they can achieve the vision, they're probably not going to bother. After that, you have to empower all of your employees to take ownership over the vision and to see it as their own vision. As a leader, you also want to recognize the contributions of your employees. So without your employees, remember guys, nothing can happen. So it's really important that you recognize their contribution. 
And finally, you want to foster that positive organizational culture at all levels within your organization. So an example of this is to think about the fact that a leader cannot achieve any visions on their own. So as a leader, you need all of your employees. So you cannot achieve any of the, your visions by yourself. So by bringing your employees in and explaining things to them, they're going to be galvanized to actually move the vision forward. The third way you can become an inspirational motivator is to provide support and encouragement to employees to achieve your vision within the organization. To do this, what you need to do is to communicate clearly what are your expectations so that employees know, you know, the terms of engagement. They understand their roles, their responsibilities. This is really important and something that I have seen in my own research. What you also need to do is to ensure that employees have the necessary resources to actually achieve. So this can be human resource in terms of employees and staff numbers and also logistical resources. Very important, guys. In addition to this, you need to provide guidance and coaching to employees so that they can actually understand and learn and appreciate where the vision has come from and understand their role within its moving forward. You also, as a leader, has to recognize that there are going to be challenges. What are those challenges and what are you doing to address them? In addition to that, you have to celebrate the successes. Any little success is worth celebrating. You might have a massive vision, but what you want to do is to celebrate the little successes on the way to achieving that vision. And so as a leader, what you want to do is to support and encourage your staff to think about things in a different way. And so to do that, that is going to bring about the sort of improvements that you want in your organization by encouraging, by inspiring and by motivating your employees to achieve the vision that you have as a leader. And that's going to improve all elements of your organization. So guys, those are the three leadership competencies that you need to become a better inspirational leader within your organization. I have a challenge for you guys. Um, and the challenge is, what are you going to do moving forward to actually create a shared vision for yourself within your organization? What are you going to do to inspire towards that vision? And finally, number three, how are you going to provide support and encouragement? And remember guys, you can be a leader at any level of your organization. I hope you found it useful. Please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. I'm always eager to hear from you guys. Let's continue to lead health better. Thank <laughs> you.